tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He is near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails. Hi. Thank you for tuning in to Travel Trails. I'm glad that you decided to spend this half hour with us to study God's Word. I'd like to begin today's program by reading two verses from Psalm 143, where the psalmist said to the Lord, Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. That's how King David started his day, is by seeking divine guidance. He wanted his God to be the center of his thought, because he knew a person's thinking could influence his walk with God. Our guest, David Dunn, is going to share from the book of Ecclesiastes two important Christian principles. If anybody who is wondering, what should I be doing today? Well, how can I live a meaningful life today? Well, here you are. Here's what God says. Fear God is what he says. And secondly, keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments, one and two. And then he says, for this is the whole duty of man. And I believe that King Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, some people challenge that, but, but the, the evidence is overwhelming that, that he wrote this. And uh, he's identified in the beginning, and then you can see his handprint all the way through. And Solomon loved nature. Uh, and uh, we know that he had everything at his disposal that um, life could easily have become boring for him because everything that he wanted was there. And after having everything, you get bored. And he began to uh, investigate everything that he, as a powerful, rich king, the richest man on earth at the time, uh, everything that he uh, had experienced made him ask, uh, what is behind everything? I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. A chasten after the wind. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. Or in seeking to answer that question, he embarked on a, on a search mission. And he describes in the early chapters of the book of Ecclesiastes everything that he did to, to try and find uh, what life is all about. And he goes all the way through. And as you read this, you'll see some negative stuff in there because we're in a sin cursed world. And he saw the negative. He saw the futility of work that people invest. And when they die, it goes to a son who squanders it within a year. Everything that father worked for is just squandered by the son. He said, this is futility. This is, this is waste. I hated all the things I have toiled for under the sun, because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. Even though, biblically speaking, we're living in a sin cursed world, and thorns and thistles grow, and, uh, and uh, some very unhappy, unpleasant, nasty things happen. Earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, uh, mosquito bites. Uh, all of these things are a part of a sin-cursed world, uh, yet it's a beautiful world. Yeah. I love nature. I love the breath of fresh air that hits me. Mm -hmm. And when it does, instantly, my mind says, thank you, Father. Yeah. Uh, when, when, I, when I feel that waft of fresh air, or even some very nice perfume when somebody walks by, you know, I, I think, thank you, Father. That is really nice, you know, and being in a state of constant thankfulness. And I want to talk about that later on sometime. Okay. 
I see trees of green Red roses too And I see them blue For me and for you And I think to myself What a wonderful world I see skies of blue And clouds of white The bright blessed day And the ever dark sacred night And I think to myself what a wonderful world For the colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky They're also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do what they're really saying is I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow They'll learn so much more Than what I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful All of creation testifies to the glory of God. What a wonderful world we live in. What a wonderful creation God has given us to embrace and enjoy. It truly makes you want to say, what a wonderful world. Those colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky. They're also on the faces of people go by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? What they're really saying is, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. And I know they'll learn so much more than what you and I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. There are those that would say that this is a book for skeptics and it's a book by skeptics. And I want to challenge that. Mm. And the simple way to challenge this is take every time that the word God occurs in the book of Ecclesiastes, about 32 times, take it, mark with a yellow marker, what it says about God. And that will answer your question whether this is by a skeptic or not. It will absolutely lay that to rest. You will realize this is a man of faith that is speaking, but he's taking a realistic look at life yeah. and recognizing the good and the bad. And his, his personal faith comes through. When you look at uh, every time the word God occurs, look at what he's saying about God, then you realize this is a person of faith. This is not a skeptic. We read in verse 13 of chapter 12, he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He's basically saying, okay, I've finished my search. I've laid out all my results up to this point. And then he says, this is the conclusion. Fear God is what he says. And secondly, keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments, one and two. And then he says, for this is the whole duty of man. How simple is that? <laughs> Fear God and keep his commandments. Nothing could be simpler. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in His commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. 
the generation of the upright will be blessed. When we think of, uh, of these two simple duties, if we think of them first thing in the morning, fear God, well, what does that mean? The Bible has a very, very clear uh, definition, if I can use that way of expressing it, as to what the fear of God is. It is not a phobia, a fear of something that we don't know. It, it's not a fear of things that go bump in the night. You know, it, it's, it's not the fear that children have when they have bad dreams. That is not the fear that is being used here. It's, it's a word that is used many, many times in the Bible, and it is used in, in different contexts. But when it talks about the fear of God, it is talking about uh, an aspect of the word fear that means to correctly apprehend or correctly understand whatever it is that you're looking at. In this case, you're looking at God. So it, it's saying properly understand who God is, with that understanding will come an appreciation of his attributes, his qualities, his love, his care, hmm. his uh, perfections, holiness, righteousness, uh, compassion, mercy, love. Uh, all of these things, when we understand that these are what it means to fear God. And if we move through uh, each day uh, with a conscious, deliberate understanding of who God is, including the fact that God says, be ye holy. You say, why should I be holy? Because God says, I am holy. And so he sets himself as a pattern for us. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is great is our God. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The Bible presents God as a miracle-working God. Yeah. I like one of the things that uh, the founding prime minister of Israel said, David Ben-Gurion, said one time, he said, uh, I am a realist. His own words, he said, I am a realist. And then he said, and to be a realist in Israel, you have to believe in miracles. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and that was a wonderful statement. Yes. Because uh, if God is who he is described to be in the Bible, then miracles are no problem whatsoever. And, you know, the Bible doesn't really care, I don't think, that much whether people agree or disagree that God can perform miracles. He does it anyway. Yes. You know, Jesus didn't seek the approval of uh, the people that were there for him to take a few loaves and fish and just multiply them, multiply them. Didn't seek the approval of the fish and the keepers of the Sea of Galilee to walk on the water. Um, miracles are are part of God's nature and they're very, very easy. And Jesus even at one time used miracles to prove his deity and left uh, the people that were there with absolutely no way of arguing against what they had seen. Uh, and so when we think of fearing God, it is setting our life for that day in context. I am moving with a conscious understanding that I am under the scrutiny of God. I am trying to do what God wants me to do. I'm trying to see the things that, uh, the way God sees them. I'm trying to love the things that God loves. I'm trying to accomplish his purposes because I am his child. I am his servant. And so as I move through this day, I, I do it in the conscious fear of the Lord. To all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Your life laid down, crucified, your arms stretched out and open wide to rescue me so I could be a child of God. From nail-pierced hands to thorn-pierced brow, your blood flows down to me somehow. It cleanses me so I could be a child of God. Praise to the Lamb that was slain. Praise to the Father who gave His Son away. Proof of love, the price of grace, 
You traded all to take my place. You died for me so I could be a child of God. Your life laid down, crucified. Your arms stretched out and open wide to rescue me so I could be a child of God. From nail pierced hands to thorn pierced brow, your blood flows down to me somehow. Cleanses me so I could be a child of God. Praise to the Lamb that was slain. Praise to the Father who gave His Son away. The proof of love, the price of grace. You traded all to take my place. You died for me so I could be a child of God. Wow, the song reflects the wonder of God's salvation. And it shows us how the three-in-one God worked together to redeem the fallen humanity. Let's listen to the Apostle Paul's teaching in Galatians chapter 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. God is indeed good and kind. For what Christ has accomplished on the cross has changed our lives for the better. So when you put your faith in him, you're no longer a slave of sin, but a child of God. I hope you accept God's offer to you today. If you desire this, pray with me right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I know that I have fallen into sin. And Lord, I know you have sent your Son to die on a cross for me, to be free of my guilt and shame. And Lord, I want to invite you, Lord, to come into my heart, to be my Lord and Savior, and to be called your son. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Parents have expectations for their children. God is a father too. He wants his children to be like him, loving people unconditionally. Jesus taught his followers this truth in Matthew chapter 5. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So I encourage you to call Travel Trails because we want to help you to know God and his expectations. Let us go back to David as he brings up another principle of the Christian walk. And then the second is simply keep his commandments. Hmm. And, and when we have a proper understanding of who God is, and uh, then we read this, he sa it says, keep his commandments. You remember Jesus said, how can you say you love me, but you don't do what I ask you to do? Are his commands harsh? No, they're not. No. And you know, some people have said, God must really be, really, really be um, self-protective. What's the word that I want? A person that is, has a low self-esteem. Because he insists that everybody does what he wants them to do. These are the critical liberal types of thinkers, not, not um, political liberals, but left-wing, you know, people that, uh, that are scoffers. Yeah. They say God has a, has a, has a uh, personality problem. But the simple truth is that as you read the Bible, God's commands are not given to protect him or to protect his identity or who he is or his program. Yeah. God's commandments, beginning with the Ten Commandments, were given for our protection. Yes. We are protected by doing what God says because He made us. 
he knows who we are. He knows what we need. Uh, he knows everything that has been a part of our life up to that point in time and what we are going through at this moment in our life, the struggles, the trials, the triumphs, uh, the relationships, you know, all of the things that make a part of what a day is and becomes, God is familiar with. And God gives us guidance. He says, uh, here, walk this way. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. In Israel, they have broken down all of the requirements in the Bible and find that there are 365 positive commandments in the Bible. Do this, do this, do this, do this. So they have one for every day. They put those actually onto the prayer shawls, the uh, little uh, stringy things that hang down. One of those is for each of the things that we're supposed to do each day. And so they're reminded of that. And as we go through each day, we're very consciously aware of the fact that as we do what God says, we are actually not only pleasing him and glorifying him and fearing him, but we are actually protecting ourselves because um, God says this is the way to walk in it. Uh, walk in it and not only will you walk in a straight path and you will know the blessing of God, you will know the protection of God, you'll be a blessing to all those around you. So when I think, when I wake up in the morning, okay, what's, what's on the agenda for today? Right away I think, okay, uh, first of all, I want to see things the way God sees them. I'm a realist. Uh, and I know that God can do whatever it is that he wants, whether it involves a miracle or not, that's okay. Uh, I want to learn to love what God loves, so I'm, I'm thinking God's thoughts after him with regard to um, all of the creation that he has made and his program, which includes the nation Israel, front and center. Uh, God loves Israel. My Bible tells me that. Yeah. I don't know that anybody else's Bible says anything else, but mine says God really loves Israel. So I love Israel and I pray for Israel. King David said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. To a command of scripture, and that is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, that uh, ties in not only with the command that we are given as God's children to think of when we think of, when we look at the word peace of Jerusalem, uh, it, uh, it is a much more significant word and idea than our simple word peace because it carries with it the entire well-being of the city of Jerusalem. May it go well with Jerusalem today. And of course, uh, warfare is not going too well, so peace fits into that. But there's so much more to it, you know, that, that God would, would bless Jerusalem, that God would uh, be favorable to Jerusalem, that God would show mercy on Jerusalem again, uh, that God would deal with the problems and the issues. So when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we're praying uh, God's thoughts after him and mm. being obedient in doing that. And God promises that he will bless those yeah. that pray uh, for Jerusalem. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Colossae, Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people 
in the kingdom of light. And then, uh, what do I do today? Well, first of all, I walk through this day fearing God. Yeah. I, want, I want my mind to be filled with all of my knowledge of God. And then I want it to reflect in the fact that I truly do love him, so I'm going to do what he says. And it's not to protect him, it's to protect me. Because yeah. it's a family thing. Our children who love us will delight to do thy will. And even Jesus said to his Father in heaven, which I understand took place before the world was created. He said, Father, I delight to do your will. Yeah. And he did that. So when he came and he served, as difficult as things were, uh, he was delighting to do the Father's will. That's, that's our approach each day. Thank you, David, for sharing with us. I'm glad that God is true to what he has described himself in the scriptures. The psalmist could testify to that. He said, O oh Lord, you are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. God by nature is good. What isn't good, he wouldn't give it to us. The psalmist also mentioned the benefits of obeying God's instruction. He said, great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. What a promise. So we can put our total trust in God and his word. He never fails. But how about you? How is your walk with God today? If you have questions and want to talk to someone about your need, feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Before closing, I'd like to encourage you to invite a friend to watch Travel Trails with you. So, see you again next time. Bring them over again to me Wonderful words of love Let me more of their beauty see Wonderful words of love Words of life and beauty Teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all. Wonderful words of life, sinnerless to the loving call. Wonderful words of life, all so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words. Of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful.